Hi, I'm Clay Carlino, and I do stuff. And amongst the things that I do, one of them is playing old video games, collecting toys, and uh, kind of, you know, being obsessive and getting into geeky stuff. So, of course, when I saw that, uh, that there are all these little arcade cabinets out, I was very excited. Now, one other thing that I really love is Stranger Things. And that's when I saw this. The Stranger Things Mini Arcade. Now, this thing really caught my eye. And what really got me wasn't so much that it actually has Namco games on here. It has Pac-Man, uh, Dig Dug, Galaxian, and Galaga. But uh, it also has Stranger Things themed games. So... I was very, very curious, but I didn't buy it. It was like 40 bucks, and uh, that just seemed like a lot. Um, I mean, not, not a lot, a lot, but more than I wanted to pay at the time. But these have gone on clearance now, and my lovely wife surprised me with one for Valentine's Day, which means that you get to find out about it and find out whether it's a thumbs up or a thumbs upside down huh? see what i did there because on the show it's uh, the upside down is the demon dimension I, I, i'm i'm sorry i i should be ashamed okay so if you see this in the store looks like this comes in this package you can see this very clearly it's got some uh, very nicely done cartoon versions of the stranger things characters i mean i would watch this cartoon and and you know get used to those dummy gorgons because you'll see them in the games that are on this little device and then on this side they've got the namco characters and that's one thing that you'll notice throughout this product they have really embraced the dual nature of the story in the show. How you've got the things that are happening in the real world and then the upside down. And so you see how on the packaging they have the Namco sign and the upside down side or the Stranger Things side. With the machine itself they do the same thing. I'm going to pull this out. When it's new, it's tied in there with twist ties, and I just pulled right through because I don't actually care about the packaging. I just saved it so that I could show it to you. Isn't that nice? So, uh, anyway. So, you look at the machine, and it's actually a cute little machine. Uh, it's, it's, yay. It's not nearly as tiny as the world's smallest arcade cabinets, which, as you can see, are like uh, a quarter of the size i mean you know I, I don't really know how you want to do the math I mean, you could say about half the height but uh you know i would say that i could get probably like i don't know like at least three of these in here you know may, maybe if i broke it up four so i'm in in terms of mass i'm thinking about 25 percent anyway so, like I said, this has the Namco games on it, and, uh, and it's got an on-off switch on the back and batteries, and so let's just go ahead and turn it on. Are you ready? Ah! That just happened. And it's going to keep on happening. Because it doesn't shut up. Just going to keep doing that. Oh wait, it's done? No, it's not. It's just going to keep going. And, um, you know, uh, initially, that was awesome. I, you know, I turned it on and it's like, wow, what a great startup screen on this little tiny device. And then it just keeps going. And it kind of goes from being awesome to being a little bit annoying. Oh, well. Uh, one other thing to be mindful of. Uh, let me pull this out of the way because it just doesn't shut up. Uh, 
the uh, the device does not have a volume control, and I, and I know a lot of these little handhelds don't have volume controls, but for a chatty device, I kind of wish it had a volume control. Well, that's not true. Um, here, if I press the button and then I push to the side, there is, there, now, now volume is low. So you can go volume off or volume low or volume high. I'm gonna put it on low. I approve of low. Uh, at some point, I suspect there's a distinct possibility that this thing is going to get uh, maybe a voltage divider in, in the series with the uh, speaker so that I can... And if I do, I will record the process and put it on this channel. So, uh... Yeah, you've got your, your software-based volume control. Uh, the only thing that I really don't like about that is that when you turn on the machine, it defaults to high. So unless you put an on-off button or a voltage divider with a knob, uh, you know, a variable resistor or something onto the, uh, onto the speaker, then every time you turn it on, it's going to be that noisy. So... Uh, you know, right here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it like a three quarters thumbs up because I appreciate that a lot of effort was put into that little startup screen, and I like the music and everything. But um, it, it loses that last twenty five percent to maybe thirty percent because it doesn't stay cool for long. Now, uh, nice thing is it has an auto sleep mode. I didn't touch it for the last minute and it, it shut up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stranger Things. So, uh, press the red button, it comes back, and now we can, uh, we can scroll through the menu. You can see that it has, uh, it has the games right on here, Pac-Man, uh, Galaxian, Dig Dug, Galaga, and then you get into the different Stranger Things titles. And uh, we're, we're probably going to spend most of the time on those, but I do want to just kind of show you the Namco titles because, um, you know, that's, that's probably where you might spend most of your time, realistically. Uh, and I'm not, don't want to give away anything about this review, but, you know, you, you probably won't spend as much time playing the other games. So, we've got Pac-Man, and uh, we'll just press the button, and then we press the button again, and that's sort of like putting in the quarter, and now it's waiting for us to press start. So there we go. Now, I'm pointing this at the screen and looking at it in my, in my review, and um, I, 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 it's really hard to play this way. Uh, <laughs> but as you can see, it's a decent approximation of the game. Uh, yeah, uh, I, like I said, I'm, it's very hard to play that way. Uh, so, um, you yeah, know, it's a decent approximation, but it's not an emulation. None of these are emulated versions of the game, which is a little bit disappointing, but it's understandable. Uh, even... Even the uh, world's smallest versions are not emulations, they're just tiny versions of the game on a tiny pixel-based LCD screen as opposed to the uh, liquid crystal, like the things that just had little shapes uh, made into them. Uh, so, you know, and, and I'm a big fan of these. I, I really, really like these. I actually did a review of this one, which you can check out on this channel. Uh, but nonetheless, we're not talking about that one. We're talking about this one. So, uh, obviously, the, the game looks good. Uh, the control is decent, uh, which is surprising because some of these little joysticks don't always work very well. Um, you know, a lot of times you get a, you get a lot of false directions at the corners. Uh, you know, you'll be you'll be trying to go up, but you'll have it just a little bit to the side, and it'll register that sideways motion, and of course, it'll pick the wrong one. 
Uh, that doesn't seem to happen on this, so I was very happy that the games are very playable. Uh, however, Pac-Man, I'm going to throw out a little bit of a criticism. On the Pac-Man version, the ghosts do not really slow down at all when they turn blue. And that's a, you wouldn't think that that's a big deal, but that means that it's almost impossible to catch up to them. Like, like you can catch up to one with a power pellet, but you're, you're not going to go ghost chasing because they're still just as fast as they were when they weren't blue. And chasing the ghosts, especially in the early levels, is a huge part of the enjoyment of playing Pac-Man. Now, you can certainly intersect them. You, you know, you, there's strategies to help, but that really hurts the, the enjoyment of the gameplay. And I'm sorry to say that because, you know, this has four games that I really, really like on it. And, and Pac-Man is, is, that is my favorite. I mean, well, actually, Speed Ms. Pac-Man with a really good arcade joystick, that's, that's my favorite. But nonetheless, um, Pac-Man is, is, you know, kind of, I, I, I identify with him because I eat too much and I run around a lot. So it was a little bit disappointing that uh, that the Pac-Man uh, you know loses that. Now that being said, the rest of the game is very very playable, and once you get past those those opening levels, the power pellets last so short that it's really not a big deal because uh, chances are you're not doing a lot of ghost chasing anyway. So that's Pac-Man, uh, and oh good, we're we're back up to full volume. And, uh, and, and here I'll press this to get into the menu, and then I'll... There we go. So, Galaxian. This is, uh, this is another very good version of the game. Uh, you know, it, it sounds good. Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm not really a huge fan of Galaxian just because it's there. I grew up with Galaga in my local uh, arcade and with Galaga, you could at least shoot two bullets at a time. And uh, that really made the game flow a lot faster. Also, Galaga has the whole capturing a fighter thing, which makes it fun. So, um, yeah, uh, Galaga, uh, Galaga just, for me, was always the game. And Galaxians, uh, or Galaxian, uh, I, I, I never remember which that is. Uh, you know, just not, not my favorite. I appreciate its point in history, but it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit limited. Uh, nonetheless, the version of the game plays really well. And if you're a fan of Galaxian uh, and you like these other games, this you can have a lot of fun with this. Uh, let's you hit the menu button to exit out of there, and oh, it's the theme music again, again. Yeah, it, every time you'll just keep doing it. So, uh, Dig Dug, the version of Dig Dug is also a very good, and uh, it's not an emulation, but a very good clone of Dig Dug. Uh, once again, press the red button, and we start out, and there's just no way that I'm gonna be able to play this while while showing it to you on, on the screen. You know, I can, I can sort of, wait, wait, maybe? Uh, no, that's down. Ah, I killed something. Yeah, look at that. Okay, and I'm, I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna die really, really quickly. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I knew that I was gonna die. So uh, let's just, you know, I'll, I'm gonna turn off the thing because it's gonna continue to make noise. It's very distracting. Uh, once again, 
Dig Dug, very playable. And actually I would say that the version of Dig Dug on here is a little bit more playable than the version on World's Tiniest Arcade. However, this one is surprisingly playable as well. So, you know, if you're a fan of Dig Dug, you know, so I would say out of, uh, out of three, uh, three so far, two, uh, I'm going to give a good solid B plus. Um, I'll go ahead, you know, uh, either B plus or A minus. Of course, you lose a little bit in these tiny versions of the games because they're not emulations, and you're not going to get emulations on on a uh, on a low end consumer product like this. You would need something with like a single board computer, and you know something with a, a little bit better hardware in order to to do that. Um, nonetheless. Uh, very impressive, and the me from 30 years ago, 40, 30, about like 35 years ago, maybe, uh, if 35 years old Clay would have seen this, he would have been blown away, but we're spoiled by things like this and by Raspberry Pi things so that now we want it to be arcade authentic, so... Um, you know, first world, first world problem. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, wait, wait, here. Do I have my Weird Al action figure? No, I don't have my Weird Al action figure. I'm sorry, so you don't get to hear him do first world problems. So, uh, next on the list. Oh, good. It's, it's that, are, are you getting annoyed by that yet? Because I kind of am. Uh, hit the menu button. Oh, hit the start button. And then we go to the menu. And we go to Galaga. And Galaga, of course, is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, I, I've always loved Galaga. Uh, it's just a cool thing. You know, the whole fighter getting captured thing. You know, just, I always thought that was great. Oh, I forgot to turn the volume down. So, let's... Uh, There we go. There, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 I want that. I want that. There we go. Yeah, see? Huh? Nice. I think that Galaga is near and dear to my heart because... There really wasn't a good version of Galaga available for the Commodore 64. Um, you know, most of the arcade classics, well, that's the end of that game. Uh, most of the arcade classics were, uh, were ported to the Commodore 64, and for some reason, Galaga just didn't make it. it. Now, there is a version that I found that is surprisingly playable, but it's obviously not like an Atari version or something made by one of the big programmers. It's something that somebody else did uh, with some very simplified graphics. Uh, I, I should do a video about that too because it's actually a, a very pretty cool game but it just doesn't look or sound like Galaga. All the mechanics are there and in, in some ways it's very impressive but it's not the same as having a, a, a decent clone of the arcade version. So I was Galaga starved for many years until recently when we started getting things like, uh, like this and now like this and of course various emulations and things like that. Uh, this version is better than this version. And yeah, it's clearly more playable than the than the world's tiniest version. Because here's the problem with the world's tiniest version of Galaga: uh, firing the bullets seems to be slower when you've got two ships. So when you've got your double fire, you know that's when you're supposed to be able to really blow away a lot of aliens. And, and in this, when, when you do the double fire, it 
it's it's slow and and it's I've found that it's actually easier to play the game without getting the extra ship which at that point uh, you're almost playing Galaxians I mean the whole the whole selling feature of Galaga as a sequel is that whole double fire thing that you couldn't do in Galaxians. Other than that, it's pretty much Galaxians, except it does give you two bullets rather than the single bullet. Uh, this one, you 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 can actually do the double fire. It's um, it's still got its limitations. It's still a little bit slow running. You're, you're, it's not the same as playing an emulated version or the original arcade machine, but it's not bad. So uh, I would say that if you're looking for a, a little ha handheld uh, version of at least three of those Namco games, uh, you know, Galaga, Galaxians, and Dig Dug, then, you know, this is actually, even at the original retail value, if you just wanted to get those three games all on one device, it's cheaper than buying one of these and getting them one at a time. Now, I, I will also say that there's a hack that can be done on these to give you like all four games these have been released with usually in groups of three or four and so if you want those other games there's jumpers in there and i've seen that people have soldered in switches so that they can just select which game that they want by by flicking a switch and have all four games on one machine but if you're not techy and you're not going to be opening this up and uh, and performing surgery, then then getting three of these is or getting four of these. Well, three since the version of Pac-Man is actually better here, so you still want you still want this one. But uh, but as opposed to buying three of these, you could get one of these and have very good versions of those games. But it's not the Namco games that that made me really want to buy this. What really made it interesting was that I saw that there were Stranger Things games. And that's pretty cool. So, uh, let's turn it on again. Oh, good, it's at full volume. Again. Uh, all right, there we go. So, let's just scroll past the Namco games. And now we've got Polywog Peril. And uh, this is a game where you get to play a, uh, a, a I guess it's one of the, uh, the younger Demogorgons before they're full size, but sometimes after they're, you know, they're, they're bigger than, than this. They're, you know, I guess when the Demogorgon was like, you know, about, you know, well, yay. Um, nonetheless, this is pretty much Frogger. Uh, now the nice thing is that it's, it's not making constant noise. That makes it a lot more relaxing. Also, all of these games are made where you only have one life. It's, you know, they didn't go to a lot of I'm, not, I'm gonna say that they didn't really go to a lot of time programming these things. You don't have multiple lives or anything like that. You get to play play once and then it tells you how well you did. It's sort of like an Odyssey. If anybody's got uh, an old Odyssey 2, if you remember, those games, for the most part, you would get one life and then it would tell you how, did, how well you did with your one life. The uh, Stranger Things games on this are the same, but still uh, a fun little diversion. So this is uh, this is obviously Frogger based, but uh, if you can see there, I know that it's very very hard to see, but uh, but the top half of the screen is in the upside down. And there seem to be demigorgons going down the street. The bottom half of the screen has police cars and regular cars. So, you know, they're really embracing that whole 
that whole, you know, flipped universe thing. And then let's see if I can do anything here. Uh, I can't even see my guy. Uh, oh, I, I see him. Oh, huh. no, I didn't see him. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, let's, all right, restart. Oh, okay, there, there I am. Oh, <laughs> this is not going well. Let's try this one more time. Whoa, whoops. Okay, so. Okay, well, there's about enough of that. Uh, so, yeah, it's essentially a Frogger game. You're jumping through the little cars, and it's actually it's actually reasonably fun. Um, you're not going to spend hours playing it, but uh, but you know, it's not bad. And I really like the uh, the fact that they they created all these little custom graphics for demi gorgons and police cars and things like that. You know, there's some creativity that went into these that I really really appreciate. So, uh, go back to the menu. The next one is Waffle Blast. There's a lot of waffle references in this thing. Uh, again, which I greatly appreciate. This is essentially uh, Asteroids. So, we, we play this uh, and then... Uh, and now the nice thing is that you are not going to accidentally start drifting. And I cannot aim at all. I, I just don't know which way. Okay, so that... No, wait, I thought I was pointed somewhere else. Am I... Come on, shoot something, shoot something. Ah, there we go. So, you see, it, it shoots the waffles, and then they become smaller waffles, or smaller pieces of waffle, maybe. So, and once again, you get one life, and it tells you your score in one life. But, you know, once again, you're not necessarily going to play that for hours, but it's, it's amusing for a little while. Wait, here, let's see if I can... Uh, I actually want to do something here. Um... I mean, you know, in terms of not sucking. So I'm, I'm actually going to look at the screen. I'm sorry. There, there's, there's the one waffle. Oh, there, there's, there's two. There's, there's a couple waffles. Now, I don't know why you're a spaceship shooting waffles. I, I, that, that's a mystery to me. But, um, but I'm willing to go with it because it's kind of awesome. I mean. Wouldn't you want to, if you were a spaceship and you could shoot at waffles, then wouldn't you? Especially if they were like five times larger than your ship. You, you'd shoot those damn waffles. You'd shoot the crap out of those waffles. So, there, there we go. I actually shot some waffles. Uh, that, I, I, I like the waffle game. Uh, it's, it's so absurd that I, I just have to appreciate it. So, uh, okay, back to the menu. Next one. This is Eleven's Quest. I cannot figure out how to play Eleven's Quest to any any degree. Um, you know, you you press the start button, and then and then it just kind of it's on rails, so you don't advance yourself. It's just going to move. And then uh, you jump over rocks, and some of, and, and you collect waffles. You know the waffles are important. So um, the problem is that some of the rocks are very hard to see, and at some point you'll go into the bottom half of the screen here, which is the upside down. Um, yeah, I I just I can't make any headway in this game. Uh, it, it it seems like there's like it probably should have been play tested a little bit but it wasn't i don't even know what game it's supposed to be like um and it's a shame because i want to like it 
And, and you know, I may, I may end up spending more time on that game than any of the other ones just trying to figure out how you get anywhere in it. Because it seems like, like there are times like when you flip into the upside down, which just happens. You know, you don't do anything, it just sort of happens. Uh, then you immediately encounter another rock that, that kills you, and I couldn't get past that. So um, I, I'll, I'll probably take some more time. I, I don't hate it, but I'm just warning you ahead of time that it is possible that you can't, you can't get anywhere. So, um, but that's Eleven's quest. I really, I particularly like the graphic of Eleven. You know, I, I love the little... 8-bit 11 that they have in that. I know, it's blurry. This camera isn't made to get that close. So, uh, this is Rock Blaster. And uh, this is essentially Super Breakout. You've got a little paddle down there, which is really hard to see because it's red on a dark background. And it has the Stranger Things logo up in the top. And uh, it makes pleasant noises when you break the bricks. And uh, for somebody that's never been very good at Super Breakout, I appreciate that it runs kind of slow. And also, the fact that it runs slow means that I can look at the camera in between times that the ball bounces and comes back. There, there we go. Um, here, here's the problem. This game is dull. Uh, it, it, you know, I mean, what you see is what you get. There are no, no special features. There's no, no, uh, one-ups, no, uh, no, uh, no power-ups of any kind, not even any bonuses that I've been able to find. It's just one brick at a time, meticulously and slowly chipping away at the Stranger Things logo. Uh, of all the games on here, I feel like this is the one that was probably phoned in the most. You know, it's... I guess if if you were just really if if you're in a dentist office waiting for a root canal and you've got this with you, maybe you'll play the brick breaking game and it's better than than thinking about the root canal. I'm kinda of proud of myself for that one. So uh Next one is Hawking, Hawkins Invasion, which is Space Invaders. And, uh, and you've got your, your little guy, which I can barely see. Uh, there are some subtle differences. You know, with all of these games, they're not, they don't play the same as the original arcade games that they're based off of. Obviously, this is a Space Invaders-like game, but if you noticed, all of the shields disappear together as a group after being shot like three or four times. You don't chip away at them. Um, I don't think the aliens ever get any closer, but still, the, the inspiration is obviously Space Invaders. Uh, and, and, of course, the aliens are a bunch of Demogorgon heads. So, you know, it's like, you, you see that graphic of the, the Demogorgon right there? Yeah, that, that's, that's what you're shooting up here. And, uh, and I do like it. Uh, you know, it's, it's not unfun, uh, it, but, again, what you see is what you get. You're, you're not going to spend a lot of time playing that game. Oh, maybe you will. Um... I, I, I don't rule you. You can play it. You can play it for as long as you like. Uh, okay, Drip Syrup. Drip Syrup is a fun game. I, I love, once again, waffle theme. Yes. And I, I believe that we need more games about waffles. So this is Drip Syrup. And this is a strategy game. It's kind of a puzzle game. 
it tells you what piece what piece of plumbing you're going to get right up here in the corner and uh, so to start out with I'm getting an elbow you uh, I don't think that you you can't rotate the pieces if you press the button it puts it down so you've got your your syrup pump up here and what you have to do is connect pieces of pipe so that they go over and land on your waffles this is a worthwhile endeavor this is important this is educational people need to know how to get syrup on their waffles and this device teaches you how to get syrup on your waffles so um yeah um now uh, my piece right now okay so the preview was that little elbow but the uh the the piece that i have currently is this and that allows you to at least plan ahead a little bit it's a it's a cross thingy so i'm gonna put that down and then uh then i've got my elbow piece now uh one thing that that's kind of nice is you don't necessarily have to fill all your holes so like if i don't plug you know if i don't have that cross thingy loop into something else it's okay as long as the syrup has a path to get from from there down to there then you win and and it's actually a lot of fun uh, i i i really enjoyed this game so I'm going to do, I guess I'll do that and, uh, oh, and then I got a little elbow there. So uh, I think I'll put that there and uh, I got another elbow. So maybe I'll just go ahead and put that there and then I got a little thing. And you see I'm building pipes. And I got another little elbow that goes over, which is good because I still have to go over. And I got a horizontal and now this elbow. Okay, so this is an elbow that doesn't really fit in my design. So I am going to try to put it somewhere where maybe I can connect it. Maybe. Uh, but you know, right now, it's just floating in air, which is fine. You don't have to connect them with every move. You can put them anywhere on the grid. But since you can't delete things, and I don't think that you can put them over things, then you just have to be careful. And at some point, you either connect your waffles or you fill up your grid. Uh, let's see. I've got... Oh, I've got another, uh, another little plus thingy, which that can work for me because I need to go down at this point. So... Uh, now I've got a horizontal, so I'm going to put that here, and uh, and a little elbow that I can't use, so I'm going to put that above the one that I can use, and uh, oh, and then another one that I don't really need, so oh, and I can do that. I know you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, like I said, let me see what happens if I try to put this over top of an existing piece. And no, it tells me I can't. So that's that's uh, one of the one of the limitations that the, one of the constrictions that they put on you in the strategy of the game is that uh, you you can't just put pieces everywhere. Let's uh, go ahead and put that up there. And oh, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and put that there. And I got another one of these right there. Oh, wait, okay, so now here, watch this. So I, I'm about to place my last piece. Notice that there are places uh, like right over here where I've got open ends, but. Uh, It, I, I, I love the I love the little gloopy sound so so yeah um, and it gives you your score and how long it took so ideally you're trying to beat your time it's cool it's fun um, I would say that drip syrup is one of the best games on here it because it's just fun uh, I it's I'm sure that it's 
a knockoff of something else, but hey, it's called drip syrup. So, um, Steve Stomp. This is a cool little game. Uh, so, you are trying to stomp the, the vines and not touch the demigorgons. Uh, I don't know what... I don't know what game this is. It sort of reminds me a little bit of Burger Time because you have to walk over the vines and then when you walk all the way over the vines, then they fall. And if you drop them on top of demigorgons, then it will kill them. Oh, like, like I'm about to do right now. Oh, I missed it. I Shoot, I was hoping that I'd show, uh, show you. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Okay, there's, there it goes, ready? Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, I stomped that demigorgon. Um, and then go down the ladder. Now you have to be careful in this game because there are places where the uh, knocking down the vine will reveal a, a hole and you can end up trapping yourself where there's a, uh, where there's a demigorgon, and then then you're kind of screwed. So anyway, that one's fun. Uh, there's not a lot of variation in the levels, so you probably won't play that one for long. But it's it's cool. We have bike bites, and that is essentially a snake game. Uh, I'm I'm trying. There we go. And, uh, so, you know, it'll keep putting waffles on the screen, and then your tail gets longer as you collect waffles. You're riding on a bike, collecting waffles. I, I don't know what your tail is. But it gets longer when you collect waffles. What else do you need for a game, right? Uh, Dust and Dash. So, uh, trying to remember this one. Oh, 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 okay. So, I don't know what game this reminds me of. Uh, you're, you're Dustin, supposedly. And you just have to avoid the Demogorgons, and you're trying to to uh, change the color of every square on the screen by rolling over it. So, I uh, better get out of the way because the Demogorgons are coming. And I'm going to go down. Uh, there we go. And, oh, I, I got hit. So, that one's not bad. It's, it, it's fun for a while. We have Stranger Skies, which is a uh, kind of a, a, a side-scrolling shooter. Now you do not, once again, you do not have control over like how far forward you go, but you move up and down and, uh, and you shoot the Demigorgons. There we go. And as you go along, you get more of them. This one I can actually sort of play while, you know, while staring into the, uh, the computer screen and watching my video feedback. So, yeah. Um, but, once again, this is it. Th this is the game. I feel like there is uh, a limit to how much of this game you can play before you're just tired of playing it. Uh, but nonetheless, it's, you know, it's a game. It's a game. A lot of these things, they're games. Are they great games for the most part? No. But there, there was... There was some love put into this. I appreciate that. Um, 
Monster Trek. Monster Trek is Flappy Bird. Okay, so you're a little dummy gorgon. You've got the real world down here and the upside down up there, uh, which seems backwards to me. I would think that the be that the uh, real world should be on top, and then the uh, uh, see. I would, yeah, it's it's hard. I, I would think that the upside down should be reflected and and below, um, you know, but. And maybe it's maybe the upside down's down there and it just maybe the upside down is looking bright and cheerful in comparison ah okay see I, I i suck at flappy bird all right i'm just gonna admit it i suck at flappy bird i wasn't bad at flappy goat on goat simulator i got the achievement for that so you know flappy goat but i, I i'm not very good at that I like this one. Okay, so this is Flash Fright. Now, it gives you some instructions. Uh, essentially, what's going to happen is you've got a flashlight, and it is going to blink the number of times, like one time for each monster that is in your three by three grid. So you're at the center of the grid and then for one space above you, one space below you, and one space on either side, and then the corners that make that up, that's a nine space grid. You are at the center and if there is a monster anywhere in that grid, then your flashlight will flash once for each monster. And then you go through and you're going to try to eliminate, you're trying, gonna try and reach your friend up in this corner and not encounter any monsters. If you encounter a monster, you're dead. And of course, like the rest of these games, you get one try and then it tells you how you're doing. So right now, you see no flashes. Oh, see, I just came up on a monster. So I'm gonna back off. I know that there are no monsters in any of the three bushes above me so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to clear out that whole line okay I know that there's no monster above me so I'm going to do that okay so there's now I know that that the one next to me was not flashing when I was down here you see, it's still in my grid, but I'm not flashing. So it's still safe for me, which means that there is a monster either directly above me or in the one to uh, what would be your left. And then there's probably a monster right next to me. So I'm just going to, to avoid that whole area. Okay, and this is where things get a little bit, a little bit tense. Okay, so... I know that there's a monster to my right or to the space up and to the right. I go up here and let's just see. So that's just one flash. So it's either or. I go up here and it's still one flash. So it could be either one of those, but that means that the one above me is probably fine. So there we go. And uh, it's at one flash. So here's where things get a little bit dicey. Uh, if the monster is right to my immediate right, then th then that would be consistent with one flash, one flash, one flash. However, the mon there could be a monster here and a monster there. Or in one of the other. And, I, and I'm going to have to just kind of gamble. Uh, I'm going to go down here. Whew. Okay, so we know that the monster is directly above me. And I'm at one flash, which means that to the side, I'm safe. And to the side, I'm still safe. And now, yeah, so that, so let me just do that. So that one that's right next to me, that one has a monster, definitely. 
no monster above. And I'm just going to go ahead and clear out the one beside me. This is a process of elimination game. I, you know, I go through and I just figure out where the monsters are and I get rid of all the bushes because I don't have that great of a memory. So if I figure it out, I want to know and then that just makes it easier to navigate in case I have to backtrack and find a different route. Now right now I'm doing all right and I'm just going to go ahead and clear out those. Okay, still good. So and still good and I th how close am I oh okay so there's one okay so uh, I know that I can go forward one now I'm encountering two so yeah that makes it very dangerous to go that way oh shoot I, I, I hit I hit the direction the, the wrong way but it turned out to be safe so I got to my friend and then you start over and uh, and you get uh, it, it'll tell you your score when you eventually die. You only get one life. So yeah, that one that one I actually played for a while last night because it, it's just s strangely relaxing yet also challenging. Uh, OK, freezer jams. This is one with 11 and waffles. I'm glad that 11 got a uh, another game that that gets to use the little 8-bit 11. This is Kaboom essentially, uh, where you're moving back and forth and you're collecting waffles. Apparently some madman is dropping waffles from the top of the freezer section and you need to collect all of them. Well, you, you actually don't have to collect them. You don't die if you miss a waffle. But at the end of, of the waffles, which I think there's 50 waffles, it'll give you your percentage score. And then you can play again and try and increase your score. Uh, the first time that I played, I, I played it, I did some OCD stuff to collect the waffles. And, uh, and I got 100%. And since the game doesn't really change, um, that, that was pretty much the end of the play value of, of collecting waffles. But nonetheless, it is cute. Uh, I love the little 11 graphic. Uh, I, I, I really appreciate whoever did the artwork and created these little things. Okay, so now I'm at the end, and it tells me that I got 83%. So, yeah. Uh, and then I could play again if I wanted to, but I don't. Okay, Babysitter Steve. Uh, this, this is Berserk. This game is pretty much Berserk. You have some of the younger kids, you're Steve, and you have to shoot the Demogorgons before they kill your, your friends your younger friends that for some reason are just going to wander into them. And I, I'm not good at this game. My games don't last very long, but, um, you know, because my kids die. And when your kids die, then you, then your game is over. Uh, see, I'm already dead. Oh, also, if you touch the Demigorgons, you're dead. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think that I touched a Demigorgon. So, um, yeah, uh, I can't, let's see, there we go, uh, yeah, okay, so, that's what that is. It's actually a pretty fun game, but it's hard as heck. I'm saying heck, trying to keep this video PC, uh, I guess it's not PC, uh, kid friendly except if i make it too friendly too kid friendly then youtube will demonetize me so hell i'm saying hell so i don't get demonetized does that make sense i don't understand youtube i'm on youtube and i don't understand it so um scoops ahoy 
Scoops Ahoy! Yes. Uh, this is a matching game, uh, you know, where you're just kind of, you're kind of picking stuff to, uh, to swap and then hoping to make matches. And then when you've got like three in a row, they, uh, it, it does stuff. So it's like, I, I don't know the names of those, those games that you get on your phone. But it's, it's like those. Uh, I think that my wife had a Disney-based one with, like, little Disney princesses and stuff. So, yeah, I, I didn't spend a lot of time with this one, uh, just because I'm not really into those kinds of games. But, um, but this is one. And Hopper Hunt. So in Hopper Hunt, you are in a police car. Uh, you are Hopper. You're in a police car. And some, for some reason, your police car is armed with lasers. And then you shoot the demigorgons. Uh, well, supposedly you shoot demigorgons. Come on. There, I shot a demigorgon. And when you have cleared all of the demigorgons out of the out of the playing area. Uh, I think I'm stuck on something right here. Let's do that. Gosh, it's hard to play like this. Uh, fortunately, the game is just not that advanced. So you see, there's this big demigorgon here. Oh, wait here, let me keep, kind of keep a wide berth of him. Because if you touch any of the demigorgons, you die. And, of course, if you touch him, you die. Okay, so right now, I'm shooting the Demigorgon. Yeah, it sounds pretty intense, right? Shooting the big black demigorgon doesn't do anything. It makes noise. I feel like somebody had an idea and just didn't have the time to to see it through. Uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of disappointing. Uh, once you eliminate all the small demigorgons, it just repopulates and and you continue to get more points until you die or you get bored. So, yeah, this is a game where I feel like if, if somebody had, like, an extra day to, to program it, but I don't, I don't think that they really had a lot of time to develop these games. And I appreciate that, that as much uh, thought was put into these as, as there was. Because, uh, you know, obviously uh, there was some creativity in these. So that's it. That is all the games on this little device. Um, and actually, you know, I didn't realize that there were so many extra games on here. I thought that it was just the the four Namco games plus one uh, Stranger Things game. And it turned out that there's a whole bunch. Yes, those games are just Stranger Things loosely themed version clones of other games done uh, simplified let's just say simplified but uh sorry i've been i've been talking for a long time my lips are dry but you you know for for what this is and uh and uh you know what what they put together here uh, i i like it uh, I, I, you know, is it, is it revolutionary? Is, is it, is it amazing? Is it a must have? If you are a vintage video game collector, then no, uh, I, I'm, it's, it's not that. And the extra games, you're probably not going to spend a lot of time on. But especially now that it's not, that, uh, it's on clearance at most of the places that I've seen, um, if you like Stranger Things and you like little mini games, 
then, and especially if you are a fan of Dig Dug, Galaga, and, uh, and uh, Galaxian, then this is great. Um, you know, even if, if you're a Pac-Man fan, this, it, it's, it's okay too, because it has Pac-Man. But I, I was just a little bit disappointed in the Pac-Man because of that, uh, that fact that the, you just can't chase the ghosts. You can strategize around it, but you can't chase them. That, you know, I really love, I'm a person that really, really just lives for that moment when you get all four. In quick succession. I mean, it's like, yeah, I am a Pac-Man god. Yes, yes, woo! But uh, you're, you're not going to get that in that version of Pac-Man. You're, you're just not going to do it. So that brings us to the end of this live stream. Thank you for staying with me. Uh, it turned out to be long because there's there's a lot of stuff on here. So. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, we're, we're, we just clicked over an hour. Sorry I kept you on so long, but nonetheless, uh, full price, maybe. You know, it's, it's not bad for the price, especially with those Namco games. Uh, and, you know, if you take into account, like, let's just put a dollar value on it. I know that at Walmart, you can get these for about $12, maybe $13. Um, so, you know, if, if, that's the, if that's the benchmark for how much you pay for one of these small scale clones of classic arcade games, this, even at full price, is a great value. You're not gonna find a, a cheaper way to buy a product on a store shelf that gives you those games. And even if, you know, even if the Pac-Man one is a little bit lacking and you just wanted the other three, it's still a good value. You know, at $13, these three would still be $39. This was about in that range. So, you know, eh or eh, yeah, yeah. And, and then, when you go beyond that, you've also got like half a dozen mini games that are adorably themed after Stranger Things. And yes, it's it's cheesy. Um, it's, you know, it, it, some of them don't make sense, but that's kind of what I love about it. it, it it's charming and and I feel like the people who put that together uh, had some fun and it comes through in the device. So uh, don't be afraid to buy one of these. Uh, it, uh, at least I, I had fun with it and I continue to have fun with it. You know, it's, it's not just collecting dust on my shelf. I've actually been playing the thing. So <sighs> there you go. Uh, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. This is Clay Carlino. Telling you to be brave, or I guess I've, I'm supposed to somehow say, um, this is Clay Carlino, I do stuff, and maybe you can do stuff too, or something like that. I've been working on my, my, my f branding, you know, trying to make it connect. I'm still not good at it. Sorry about that. <laughs>